Hello and welcome to Sim3D presentation. Sim3D is a realistic multipath simulation toolset that enables GNSS developers across the globe to improve the multipath mitigation logic on their receivers or other form factors. I'm AJ Bemu, product line manager um, for Sim3D based out in the UK, um, UK office of Spartan Communications. As we all know, GNSS constellations are designed for open sky use case. All performance specs of GNSS signals in the ICDs are for signals received in an open sky environment. Although this is a good starting point, majority of the GNSS users today, however, are in environments where GNSS performance is not great, like the ones um, you see on the screen. And not all have the same effect or impact on the GNSS signals, further complicating the test scenario. It may be worth looking at building geometries and physical materials as the major contributing factor towards the multipath effect. And we call this as the first order multipath effect that is contributed by the building geometry and the physical materials. The second order multipath effect are more significant from traffic, street furniture, and other sources um, in, in, um, in the environment. Now, now, that, now, now, that, we have, um, now that we've seen what multipath um, is, let's understand what multipath can do in terms of the performance. So here on the screen, you see two different scenarios. One is a dynamic, one is a static. The one, the plot on the top is a dynamic scenario, a trajectory information. Um, the route in red is the ground truth. The route in the blue is the receiver computed uh, trajectory. Now you can see that a multipath um, it can impact the trajectory information in significant ways. If you notice, the scale in X and Y are latitudes and longitudes and degrees. So the error might not look significant, but it actually is of significant magnitude um, in terms of meters. And this is all coming from multipath on a receiver, which has no clue of how to mitigate multipath. The same applies to the bottom plot. Um, here, however, the scenario is not a dynamic scenario. It is actually a static test. And you can see how much a multipath could impact the performance of a static GNSS receiver when it does not know how to, how to take the GNSS into effect, the multipath into effect. So what is our view and how can we help our users to improve the GNSS multipath mitigation capability on their receivers today or any other products today. So our view is that if we can provide users and developers with a controlled environment, you will be in a much better position to improve the mitigation algorithms um, than what they are today. And, and, uh, and in that pursuit, we, are, we, we have SIM3D that enables users to sit in the lab and have a rich synthetic environment with 3D mockup models, like the ones that you see on your left-hand side of the screen, with GNSS ray tracing enabled on top of the 3D model and RF generated really to interface any end GNSS receiver, either, either radiated or conducted. As we know, realistic multipath can only happen in simulations with rich 3D environments and real-time computation of ray tracing. Sim3D is our solution that generates GNSS RF signal with realistic multipath properties overlaid on the signal based on ray tracing in a rich 3D environment. For this, we partner with the market leading Octal SC based out in France, um, who, come, who, who, who came up with a 3D mockup model and ray tracing um, that is really powerful and is used and is being used by uh, both commercial, research, and um, military institutes globally. 
So we saw previously that Synth3D is nothing but a combination of synthetic environment, ray tracing, and RF generation. So let's look at what a synthetic environment is. Synthetic environment is nothing but a 3D mockup or a 3D model of a scene. The 3D mockup can contain 3D objects from buildings to pedestrians to trees. And each of these objects have assigned physical material properties that help determine the impact of signal due to these 3D models. You can have basic building blocks like the ones on the slide um, here, uh, which is just cubes no structure, no, no great structure to it. You can use that as a synthetic environment, um, as a baseline. Or if you really need more richness to it, we can add further um, details onto that structure, um, add materials to it, um, which actually increases the richness of the synthetic environment overall. And it definitely contributes to the realism um, of the GNSS multipath environment. So let's, let's talk a bit more about synthetic environment categories. So synthetic environment itself um, can be split up into three buckets. So the first is a fictitious mock-up. And um, a, a fictitious mock-up is essentially um, something that you use for unit testing or, or parametric studies. So you can create a simple concrete floor, you can create a wooden wall, or you can create two separate buildings of different materials, and you can vary the, excuse me, you can vary the height of the different, different towers of the buildings. You can assign different properties, or you can assign the same property to both. So this is, this is, these are both examples of fictitious scenes. Let's move on to geotypical, which is the second kind or the variety. This is here, what you see is a, is a typical example of a geotypical rural scene. By geotypical, it looks real, but there, I mean, you, you can't really map this to a real scene anywhere outside to real life. Again, this is another geotypical small city. Um, so the reason why you come up with geotypical cities is to study um, statistical analysis, reliability tests. You basically use it for algorithm design and development. The third and the last um, category is the geospecific scene. What you see on the screen is a geospecific mock-up of a Shanghai, um, of a Shanghai scene. And you use geospecific when you want to compare field data um, or simulate it against field data in a pursuit to reduce your field effort and cost. This can also be used, geospecific by the way, geospecific can also be used for mission debriefing and planning. Now that we know the types of environments, let's look at how to create these environments. Sim3D, which is our platform, um, again, let me stress that Sim3D is a combination of synthetic environment, ray tracing, and RF generation. So synthetic environment, or Sim3D, um, apologies, Sim3D includes tools um, for you to create all these three different types of environments yourself. SEFFT is a set of converters that can be used to convert existing 3D scenes in popular formats into a format that Sim3D supports. So you have a source data somewhere and all you have to do is just convert them into, a, into, a, into the format that Sim3D supports, that's when you use SEFFT. SEFFT in light, on the other hand, is a semi-automatic modeler to help create 3D environments and modeling. We'll see more about SEFFT in light in the next slide, but typically you can use it for geotypical um, scene creation. Sometimes you can also use it for geospecific scene creation. Trimble SketchUp um, the plugin or 3ds Max plugin are used to provide um, um, plugin tools to create models yourself. Uh, we'll also see an example of how to create that in the later slides. If you're short on resources or if you're short on time, um, our professional services team is here to help you in your need. We can offer services starting from scene creation to test analysis and planning. SE Agitum Light 
um, is a dedicated tool towards the generation of 3D markup of synthetic environment based on source data. And the source data can be any of these three here that you see on the screen. It can be photography, it can be altimetry, it can be planimetry. Um, it usually is all three. Yeah, so altimetry is nothing but a digital elevation model. Photography can be from airborne or, or spaceborne sensors. Planimetry is essentially um, a, a vector data that gives information about the features that can be observed attached to the terrain, such as roads, rivers, buildings, etc. SEHTM light is based on Global Mapper um, GIS, and thus um, it's got all the capabilities of a Global Mapper import um, uh, import capability. SEHTM light can be used to generate geospecific terrains from aerial photography information. Planimetry, um, so uh, some of the very popular planimet planimetry data formats that can be used within SIM3D or SC Agitim Light is OpenStreetMap or the .OSM format. Um, and, and similar to planimetry, the popular altimetry data source um, data formats that can be imported into SAHTM light is the DTED, which is the digital terrain elevation data source, uh, which can also be used to import data from an external source, an external DTED file into SIM3D. So let's look at um, an, an example of how you can really quickly create um, a fictitious scene in less than three minutes. Like we spoke um, in, in an earlier slide here, we, we can use SketchUp um, as a tool to create some um, 3D objects from scratch. Here we are creating a simple two-tower object. And a two-tower object um, will be connected, not that re this really exists. Again, let's stress the need or the importance of fictitious scene. Right, so this is used for unit testing, or you can you you can try to understand how the algorithms are performing in a simple scene. It gives you intuition. Um, so here we are defining two towers. You can have flexible height. You can change the height. You can um, take it to the next level. You can assign the material properties. Um, the same materials to both, or you can assign individual materials to each of the towers. So what we are doing here is we are just um, adding an interconnect. We'll then add material properties. So you can see there, there's asp asphalt and concrete. Um, different materials can be assigned to different surfaces. You can have different materials to different towers, which is, which is exactly what we'll do here. Um, and we'll also add a different material to the ground plane. The created object is exported or saved in a .bdd format, which is the native format of Sim3D. This scene can then be imported into SIM3D. Let's import the BDD file that we saved from the SketchUp tool. There it is. The next step is for us to map the materials to the, to the values that we have within Sim3D. That's the materials manager. We can keep the values the same or, we, or, or the user has the flexibility to change it. Or you can use our latest version of the materials library and map the materials to the one that we added onto the, the, the fictitious scene. And that is all it really takes for us to create a fictitious screen from scratch using a Trimble SketchUp tool. Now let's add GNSS signal propagation onto it. Oh, by the way, sorry, um, we, need to, we need to geo-reference it because we need to understand um, or, or we need 
we need to assign it a location information so we know what satellites are visible for that location and also assign the time. So there you go. Once you're done, you import the scene, assign a location to it, um, give the time information for simulation, um, and we get the GNSS propagation or ray tracing on top of the models. Um, a closer look at the materials manager. So Sim3D computes monthly path based on the physical materials of the, um, of the objects. They have um, the, the, the materials themselves have intrinsic properties, which can be manipulated by a user. We highly recommend not to manipulate if you're not an expert on this area. Uh, you, you are rather better off by importing our materials library um, and then just playing around toggling the different rays. Now here, um, this is the different rays that we use um, within Sim3D to help improve the, the GNSS ray tracing methodology. We've got three kinds of rays, reflected, transmitted, and diffracted rays. All of these have their own representations and they do change based on the materials that they interact with. Based on what we have seen so far, let's actually see a scene where all of this is put together. We can quickly come up with a Sim3D scene um, if, if there is a source outside or we can start to create everything from scratch. Once the scene is created, the next task is to import 3D objects onto the scene. The objects could be 3DS files or other formats. The objects that you see here in this video or in this scene are tanks, soldiers, helicopters, and drones. The antenna location on the object can be user determined. What you see is you have got a tank, we have assigned where the antenna location is, uh, we picked a spot for the antenna. Um, we are then assigning a trajectory for a tank. And there is the ray tracing on, on top of um, the synthetic environment. So you see direct line of sight, you see reflected, you see diffracted based on the materials of the buildings around it and the materials of the tank and the ground surface. Now you can use you can use this scene to determine the best location for your antenna. You can run a scenario, you can run the simulation in one location, collect all the data, rerun the scenario or the simulation by placing the antenna in a different location, compare them. That's another use case. You can add, you can add another vehicle to the scene just like we are doing now, we are adding a helicopter and we are assigning a trajectory to the helicopter. It's, it's going to move around on the scene, on the top of the scene. And we can see how the signals of the receiver on the tank would be impacted because of the motion of the helicopter on the scene. So there it is. We've got an helicopter that's going around on the scene. We then add another drone to the scene to further complicate. Um, we've, we've assigned a trajectory, which is a, slight, a straight line trajectory to the drone. It all gives you a feel for how rich a scene can really turn out. You've got a tank, um, uh, you've got an antenna on the tank, you've got a trajectory assigned to the tank, you've got a helicopter, you've got a trajectory assigned to the helicopter. You've got a drone, you've got a trajectory assigned to the drone, and all of these play together. And you can see the impact of all of these 3D objects on the GNSS signals at the place of the antenna on the target vehicle. So this is just a close up of the drone and shows how the drone and the helicopter are impacting the GNSS signals. So the point source is essentially an antenna, a, a satellite farther away from the scene. To, to further add to the richness of the scene, what you can do is you can add a beacon. The beacon could be a jammer. 
um, an interference source, um, like the one that you see here, the, the green block is a jammer source. And let's see how much uh, the jammer is going to impact the signals on the drone. So there it is. So we are keeping the drone in the trajectory as is. And now we are placing a beacon and see how beacon is really impacting. So these are the diffracted, transmitted, and line of sight between the jammer, the beacon, and the drone itself. So there it is. That is Sim3D for us. Um, um, it, we really covered this, the, the scope of it. You start off from a fictitious scene, you can take it to a highly rich, 3D environment. So how does the setup look like? So this is a seamless integration of PauseApp. So we've got Sim3D running on a laptop that is external to our simulators. The, the laptop will have an NVIDIA CUDA card because all of this is extensive processing, real-time ray tracing with materials in a synthetic environment. All of this does need a lot of processing, which is why we need an external laptop with a GPU card in it. That runs Sim3D, it creates the ray traces, it passes on the relevant information onto the simulator. The simulator is the master to create the satellite information, the trajectory information. Um, and by combining all of this, the output from the simulator is a GNSS signal with multipath embedded onto it, which can then be received by the DUT, either radiated or over coax. That's Sim3D um, at a high level. If you, are, if you are interested to hear more, more about Sim3D, we are happy to share further information. It was a pleasure to be here and talk about Sim3D. Thank you so much for your attention.